Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this. So this is the SR24. This is one of our coolest achievements from an engineering standpoint. Um, this is for spring rolls. So SR24, we call it the SR for spring roll and 24 because we can make 2400 per hour. Uh, it's a great capacity um, and great engineering. So I'll walk through it. The first step that you're going to do is this whole, the whole thing of the SR24 you're making 100% from scratch. Um, so the first experience that the customer is going to have uh, that's probably new for them is actually making the pastry. Most people who make spring rolls by hand, in fact pretty much everyone who makes spring rolls by hand, you have to buy the pastry. So you're kind of at a victim, or you're, you have to depend on the market to give you the right pastry sheet, which it doesn't always do that. So some people they, you know, they have to buy one pastry and then another one and they kind of tweak it for their recipe because there is some variance. Um, so now the first you know, great experience you're going to have or the first um, revenue building uh, experience that you're going to have as a customer is you're going to make your own pastry. So we have our batter mixer right here, which is going to, you know, mix up the entire. It's a it's a liquid batter um, that's the, you know makes the spring roll pastry. So you'll uh, you'll mix it up in here, and then this will feed directly into the machine. So the first step is we have the large heating drum, and it's just a big circle with heating, uh, you know, heated on the inside. So as the liquid is coming up onto the onto the drum, it's actually going to cook it. Okay, it's going to cook it just enough. All this stuff, as I'll show you in a minute, is uh, totally programmable, so you can kind of tweak it a little bit. So the, the pastry is going to be coming up, and we have a blade here, which is actually going to take the pastry off in a continuous film, and we're going to put it onto the conveyor here, which as you can see is open. So that allows it to cool down. At this point here, you have your pastry that's coming off of the line, and uh, it's cooled down, and then we'll go into the cutting process. So right now, this is the first benefit of automation, is that you have your own pastry. Very often what customers they can do uh, is they'll tweak the, the, the pastry. Everything on the entire machine is programmable. So from the filling to the folding to everything is programmable, including the pastry. So you can kind of, you know, we can coach you through different recipes of pastries, different thicknesses. Um, very often that affects the, the texture of the final product of the spring roll. Um, so you can make it thicker, you can make it thinner, you could, you could heat it a little bit more, you could heat it a little bit less and perfectly tweak it uh, and then kind of save those settings on the machine. Um, so you're really going to tweak it until you get absolutely perfectly what you want and then it's totally repeatable. Yeah, so what you have is you have the ability to program um, all of these different, different variables that each one of which affects the final outcome of the spring roll and starting here with the pastry, um, you can then go, go through as I'll show in a minute and program the entire thing and everything about our machines are totally repeatable. In other words, once you tweak it to get the exact uh, setting that you want on every different, uh, on every step of the process, you can save that setting and then it's repeatable through um, basically a push button inter interface. Um, so a couple thousand an hour, 10,000 per day, a million over the course of a couple of months and it's totally repeatable. And of course you can change it at any point. So as we proceed through, you have the cutting station here. We're going to have a cut pastry. We push it through the line. And then what we do is we actually rotate it. So it's going to be diagonal. Right now, there's a square pastry that's proceeding through. 
And because of the way we're, we want to fold it, as I'll show in a minute, we want to rotate it diagonally. So we have a rotation uh, piece here. We're going to push the pastry through this rotated at a diagonal angle. And this is our filling station. The filling hopper is very generous uh, with, with what you want to put into it. So because we have a pin inside of the filling hopper that will continuously drive the food down, we, we're, we're generally able to handle almost any filling. Okay, so you, you, have, you have a lot of variance, you have a lot of leeway uh, with what you put in your spring roll. So you're, again, you're going to totally program it. It's up to you how much filling you want in it. You can program, you can save it, you can tweak it. Uh, every spring roll will, be ha will have a certain amount of filling deposited onto it, and then it will proceed through. What kind of fillings do we do uh, on the SR24? Anything you want. I mean, vegetable, we have, I mean, the great thing about a spring roll is it's something that has been kind of Americanized. So we have everything from a totally authentic Asian uh, cuisine, whether you know China, Singapore, uh, Philippines, all countries that have spring rolls or spring roll variants. Uh, but it's also something that we have a lot of American customers or Canadian customers uh, that have sort of a, a uh, you know a Western style. So what can we handle? We can handle almost anything: uh, vegetable, at different vegetable uh, combinations, meats, chicken. We have. Some people have, they make seafood spring rolls, uh, beef, easy for us to do, pretty much anything. Um, if you can think of it, we can, we can put it through, no problem. Moving on, um, the entire machine, and this is one of the greatest things about it, is that it's completely programmable. You'll see that uh, in the operation of the machine, everything has a separate motor. So you can tweak any part of you know, the, the multiple things happening in concert that it's, that's making your spring roll. You can uh, customize and change the settings on the cooling and cutting station, the filling hopper, the first folding station, the second folding station. You can change all of the settings in these things and this is part of the process of tweaking your product to get exactly what you want. You get a setting that you like, you get a perfect combination, you save it and you can have that spring roll come out exactly the way you want it to. Suppose that you have a couple of different variants of your spring roll. Uh, no problem. You can have a couple of saved uh, settings that will represent your two different products. So if we move forward here, what we're gonna, where we get to right now is the uh, folding station. So what we do very simply is we have a two-step folding process and then we have a rolling um, station. So we have these sort of flaps right here which allow the, uh, that sort of diagonal uh, pastry sheet with, a, with now filling on it to fold right here and then proceed forth and fold right here. And then we move it forward. So now uh, the pastry is, um, it's, it's sort of uh, perpendicular to the line uh, at, at which it's proceeding. And then it goes through to the final uh, part of the line, which ends with kind of a cool way to uh, actually roll the, the spring roll. So as it proceeds through the uh, sort of chain link fence, uh, uh, it's, it's actually rolling it up. So what you have in the end, is you have a perfect four inch spring roll that you would get in a, you know, any, any restaurant um, that is totally customized, has the exact pastry, uh, that you want, that has the exact texture that you want, and the filling that you want. Simple. So now we're going to get started on our second recipe. Now you've heard of enchiladas, right? You, you've seen them in the supermarkets. You've been to some of the, the best Mexican, progressive Mexican restaurants, and they put a twist on things. I'm going to be doing my version of enchiladas, which consists of a very easy recipe using flour tortillas. But I'd like to talk about some of the products that I'm going to be using first. As you can see, I have some red beans here, in which I'm kind of getting my stuff together. 
uh, but I'm jumping over here and I'm going to talk a little bit about what we got going on here. We're using La Morena products uh, as a basis of our enchilada sauce. And then we're going to be using some Pecan Ridge Plantation Oil. We're going to be using some Spice World Garlic. We're going to be using some Mother's Earth's Dehydrated Onions and Del Real Foods. We're using their carnitas, uh, which basically is a fried pork. Incredible product. And we're going to be using all the ingredients that you have here and kind of bring together my version uh, of an enchilada. So we have some beans like I expressed before. These are actually dehydrated beans. We reconstituted them in a little bit of uh, hot water and you can see they blew up nicely. Now we're going to put the rest of our, uh, our stuff in there. Now we're going to add a little bit of garlic. We're going to add a little bit of this carnitas. Beautiful product. You know, not too much. I, I probably want, look, I'm a vegetarian, you know, by heart, but I love meat too. So anytime I'm going to do meat or pork or poultry, I'm doing half vegetables as well. So I like half beans and half carnitas. You can do whatever you want at the house. All right, so now we're going to put some of our sauce in here. And you see these beautiful chilies. Add a little bit of straight tomato sauce as well. And basically what we're going to do is move this around a little bit. Now my carnitas were pre-cooked and they're pre-fried last night. I always like them to sit a day or so, you know, overnight. We we'll take a little bit of dehydrated onions and watch how this takes the flavor really to the next level. Now we're going to give this a mix. We're going to let this continue to cook. And what I sort of like to do is put half of my cheese in here and half of it in the tortilla when I'm rolling it. I'm going to kind of show you what I mean right now. I will show you. So we're going to take our tortilla. Right? We've all seen it. The only problem is they haven't really come out with a good gluten-free one yet, but hopefully they're working on it. But anyway, so you got your tortilla, and anyone will do. We're moving this around. You see how the carnitas and the beans kind of take this to another thick level? And that's what we're, and the smell of this is incredible, really. I mean, we did nothing to this. Just put the basic ingredients, my friends, basic. All right, look, we said we we're going to put some cheese in there, right? So we got jalapeno jack, aged cheddar, white cheddar. We got something called kiswang cheese as well. I'm going to roll that in there. I just want it to be melted a little bit because I'm looking for the cheese to help bind it. Because keep in mind, we're actually going to be frying this over the pan. See how it starts to melt now? We're good. Let's not overkill this baby, all right? Now, we're going to take, woo! Man. We got the camera people drooling here. I think we're going to do two of these. We're going to roll this up just like you would anything else. Food, that is. We got one. Now we got another one. Very nice. Pliable, right? Get the ones with lard. They taste better. They're not so good for you, but all right. Back down again. See what I'm talking about? About the cheese takes it to a whole nother level. Don't forget those chilies in there too. I'm gonna roll this baby up. Feels a little light. Feels a little light. There we go. We're going to roll it, all right, seam side down, and this is what we're going to do. We got our hot pan here, right? This is the way I like to do it. Take your pecan oil, make sure you get a good amount. Now seam side down is how we want to take this. Seam side down. Oh yeah, smell it. And what I like to do is get it crispy. Smother it with some sauce that I made before. I've taken the sauce of everything I've just done here, I've added a little bit of cream in there as well. Take it to another level. And we're going to be throwing that in. You'll see exactly how we're doing this here. Now you do it seam side down because eventually you're going to get uh, a nice crispy texture on the bottom of this. And then we're going to do it all around, all sides. And then we're going to layer some of the sauce over it what makes this really good is it starts off crispy, but after the sauce has kind of sat on top of it for a while, you let it sit for like five minutes, it gets nice and soft, and that crispiness absorbs the flavor 
of this uh, enchilada sauce. All right, good. You see what I'm talking about with that? Seam side down, right? Don't be scared to put a lot of oil in there. It's good for you. It's not going to hurt. It's really going to take your dish to the whole another level. We're going to give that another minute on each side. We want to get all the sides nice and crispy. You know, I remember I went to Mexico. I've been to Mexico so many times. Every time I go to Mexico, you go in a different area of Mexico, they make the uh, enchiladas a lot different. Some, some of them make it look like a crepe. Uh, some of them make it, I've had with a, a crepe and then a hard shell as well, which gives you like that crispy consistency. I've kind of taken both of those and, and made my own version here. Now this stuff will fry fast because of the amount of fat that's in the tortilla shell, which means that it'll burn quickly and crisp just as quickly. Just got another second there. I mean, if you wanted to take this to a whole nother level, you could easily like a melange peppercorn, white, red, and black, all over the outside of this baby. You could just, I mean, there is no limit. Like I said, the hotter the pan, you're gonna see that we're gonna flip this baby over. All right? We're just about ready to go now. Now, you're gonna get some flavor all over the place. Take our spoon for a second here. What I like to do is take some of this oil and go right over the top, right before I take it out. Don't, don't let your enchilada become dry at all. You'll thank me when you go to eat this crispy. Good. Now you're going to take your plate. Now this is a big side. I mean, you probably can get away with doing one. I'm, I'm going to do two because we have a lot of hungry people waiting in the background here. But you really don't. I mean, this is an. Um, this is this is made for a king right here. All right, now we talked about that crispiness that we were looking to get, and we got it exactly. And we talked about the sauce that we really wouldn't have time on the show to make, but this is very hot. So what we're gonna do is take the cheese and put it over the top. Right? All right, now we're gonna take our sauce that we made and go right into that same pan because we just wanna get it very hot. I mean, it's already cooked, but we want the flavor of that tortilla, of everything that went in the dish to come up. We want a very hot sauce to put on top of this. This is how I like to eat it. I hate when you're going in like to some of these restaurants, they make the enchiladas and the outsides are crispy, they're burnt, they don't have any sauce on it. This is the way I like to eat mine. Super, super hot because we do want that cheese to melt itself. And you don't necessarily have to put this back in the oven to melt cheese. You can melt cheese with hot sauce and not have to sacrifice uh, any of the outside shell here. All right, good to go. All right, with a spoon, we're gonna be very easy, and we're getting every single area we can with this. Voila! I just heard somebody say, yee hey. I feel like I was in one of these, uh... oh, this is beautiful. Mexico would be proud of this one. And I'm getting every single area of the tortilla. Because all I need to do is just let this sit for a couple of minutes. And everything's going to bleed into this. Now, if you notice, you see the cheese starting to melt already. It's a, it's a, you're at a huge disadvantage if you think the only time you have to melt something is throw it in the oven to kill it. Uh, it's really not the situation, especially this. We put more than enough sauce on there because you're going to need it, right? You got the carnitas inside as well, perfect combination of flavor and balance. We're going to take a little bit of these peppers to garnish right on top. Woo! Right here in Mexico, they're saying, come on back. Come on back, Guadalajara. Puerto Vallarta. Mmm. With some green peckled serrano peppers. You need to have them, that's what I say. All right, 
Now, oh man, the, the heat, like the steam, is like coming up from these peppers. I'm already almost starting to cough here. Put that in the center for a little garnish. And that, my friends, is what I'm talking about. Now, if you really wanted to take it to the next level, like if you haven't had enough, you take just a little bit of oil and you drizzle it over the top of this baby. And that added fat is really gonna help this dish out. But it's a good fat. So here you have it, Chef Joe's version of enchiladas. Okay, and I'm taking the whatever you wanna call old existing recipe and I've kinda of put it in a box and blew it up. Now this is the, the new version. And I find if you do exactly the way I did it here, this stuff is amazing. So here you have it, my version of the enchiladas with a twist. Today we're here with our ST97W and we're making chocolate chip cookies. Uh, 97W is another phenomenal encrusting machine as it uses a slightly different process. Um, we do the, uh, uh, the encrusting function on a vertical plane. Uh, so we have the encrusting uh, happening north to south and we use a shutter system which is you can kind of think of it like your hand. If you bring your fingers uh, together to a point and then open and close, it's exactly how our shutter system is working there. Uh, it gives us the ability to create many different shapes. We have shutters with different shapes. We do foods throughout the world. Um, right now we're doing cookies. Uh, one of the cool things that you can see, we actually have one shape with a bit of a point. Um, this comes from one of our customers. They have when, you know, when the cookie bakes, it'll you know, spread out and it'll leave a little bit of volume in the center. It's just kind of how how they like it, it's their brand. Uh, but again, we can we have many, almost an infinite number of shutters. We can make new shutter systems that create different shapes. One of the things you'll really notice about the cookie is we use chocolate chips in here. Machines are, you know, sometimes they won't let you uh, have a chocolate chip or it'll melt or it'll be destroyed. And, uh, and you can see with the cookie that you're making here, you can keep that recipe. Again, it's all, we, we all of our foods, we make them as if they were done by hand. Uh, so you can see a great cookie there, and ready to go straight into the oven. Um, we have different processes. Some people will, you know, take the cookie from here and they'll freeze it, and then they'll distribute it and bake it locally. Uh, they'll bake it right then and there and package it. Uh, but it just gives you a tremendous versatility. You can see the machine is very small, um, and it allows you to, you know, have a have a production facility and have a very high throughput. We're running at a, at a relatively slow pace right now. It's going to be probably about 20 or 30 percent of its capacity. So it's going to go much faster. It'll give you multiple thousand per hour. Um, so very high capacity. Um, for this cookie, it's a uniform recipe. There's nothing encrusted. There's nothing on the inside. It's all one color. Uh, this machine um, is, whereas it will do this very simply, it's incredibly easy for it to do. This machine also does encrusting as well. So in this hopper, you could have a filling going inside of the cookie. We don't need that for this application. This cookie is, is just a uniform material. It's just a cookie dough with, um, with chocolate chips in it. In reality, the machine can do way more than that. This is one example. Um, we're not using the filling hopper as an example. So this machine does ex uh, extrusion uh, to create an encrusted product, meaning you're going to have something on the inside if you want it. Um, that's one feature. The other feature is that in our dough uh, station, we have two different compartments. And what happens in the process is that your dough, you can have two different colors, and the extrusion process will ensure that both doughs are, hap were, are entering the extrusion process evenly. So what happens is you'll have a cookie that has two different colors that's perfectly swirled. Uh, in the Middle East, as an example, a very popular application machine, there's a kind of cookie that's called mamoud and it's a two-color cookie, um, very brown and white type of color. And on the inside, there's a date paste. So it's an encrusted cookie, very popular application of the machine. You can see with the machine, you can start off doing something very simple, just a basic cookie like this. We have this particular shape because it's one of what one of our customers uses. But then you can grow as your, as your cookie business becomes more and more popular. You can add something in the middle. You can change the, uh, you can change the recipe. You can add different things into it. You, instead of doing chocolate chips, you can have other things going into it. You can have different colors. Very, very versatile for a very compact machine and a low-cost machine. Thank <laughs> you.